and welcome to ISTV English News. This is Panorama giving you the news. Let's see the headlines. It's unfortunate that Manipur government is not trying to utilize bio resources properly, says Union Minister Hertz Burden. News in detail. Union Minister for Science and Technology and Bioresources and Earth Sciences, Dr. Hertz Burden today described as unfortunate for Manipur that the state government is not trying to properly utilize the bioresources which are available in plenty in the state. This was stated by the Union Minister while attending the laying of foundation stone for the construction of Institute of Bioresource and Sustainable Development, IBSD, at Takelpat. Director of IBSD, Dina Bandhu Shahu, and several other dignitaries were present at the function. Speaking on the occasion, Director Dina Bandhu Shahu said the institute to be constructed will provide a lot of benefits to the people. All out efforts will be made to complete the construction within a period of three months. Union Minister Hertz Burden further said the existing science center will be upgraded on par with the other modern centers and also necessary steps will be taken to establish a science center in each district of the state. Honesty and sacrifice are necessary in making a work successful. Efforts are being met under the guidance of Prime Minister Narendra Modi to make an egalitarian society by exploiting the potentials available in the Northeast. Therefore, experts and scientists will have to get out of the routine education to work as entrepreneurs to utilize assets available in the reason in their proper places to develop the reason, the union minister said. To learn from our own past or from the achievements of the rest of the world. And then how can we try and find solutions for them in our own country by the application of our mind? Our intellectual acumen is well tested and well established internationally also. And I can assure on behalf of the Government of India that I will personally supervise when I go back whatever support etc. etc. is needed for the development of this institute. When I came here in the morning and I saw that this institute was established in 2001 and when I saw the condition or the journey of the institute for last 14 years, I felt a little sorry about the state of affairs in the sense that in 14 years an institute with the help of the various governments at the helm of affairs, an institute which has a potential and about which it's mentioned that this is one of the most prestigious places not only in India but of the whole world. The class 10th board examination under Board of Secondary Education Manipur has commenced from today. The examination is being held at 31 board centers and 67 private centers. In all, 28,447 students are taking the exam. For the first time in the history of Manipur, Maitai Mayek has been incorporated as a subject in the class 10 examination this year. On the other hand, flying squads, security personnel and magistrates are taking all possible steps to prevent untoward incidents during the examinations. No electronic devices were allowed within the campus of the exam centers. Movement of persons around the exam centers was also restricted. Teachers of Iroisemba Upper Primary School contributed money and bought bags, shoes, socks and ties for the students and distributed the same to the students of the school. ZEO of John 1, A. Moirang Leima of Uripok Division was the chief guest at the program. A one-day training program for farmers was organized by Self-Employment Voluntary Association, Babupara, at the complex of Seba Village Agricultural Information Center, Kamong Langoljam Laikai today. A dead body of a man was found in Nambul River at the Sagolban Bijoy Govinda area early this morning. The dead body has been identified as Urembam Boom, 40 years, son of late Urembam Komei of Uripok Atom Lekai. 
The family of the deceased man stated that Boon has been missing since February 10. Imphal West Police has registered a case and initiated investigation in the death. A state-level awareness program on National Horticulture Scheme was held at the conference hall of State Gaze House today. The program was jointly organized by National Horticulture Board, Gawahati, and Mission for Integrated Development of Horticulture, Manipur. Additional Director of National Horticulture Board, N.C. Mestri, Additional Director of, of Horticulture and Soil Conservation, Government of Manipur, K. Kipgan, and Under Secretary, Ministry of Horticulture, and Sanatomba was the main guest of the program. Sanatomba said, this type of awareness program will be beneficial to people who are interested in horticulture. Officer of Horticulture and Soil Conservation Government of Manipur, K. H. Upendra said, this program was organized to make people aware about the benefits provided by this scheme. Upgradation of cold storage, the refrigerator, pan, sumba, now the national and international news. The Rastriya Swayam Sebak Sangha attacked Bharatiya Janata Party's Delhi Chief Ministerial candidate Kiran Bedi for party's dismal performance in the assembly elections. Sangha, in its mouthpiece, Panch Zanya, questioned whether Bedi's appointment as Chief Minister candidate was correct. Sangha also asked whether the results would have been different under Union Minister Dr. Hurst Burden's leadership. RSS had called BJP's poll campaign defensive. It had also said that the decision to bring in Kiran Bedi to counter Arbin Kejriwal was taken too late. With an aim to end the deadlock of a government formation in Jammu and Kashmir, Minister of State in the Prime Minister's office, Jitendra Singh, is set to meet State Governor Narendra Nath Bora today. Singh will apprise Bora of progress in talks between the People's Democratic Party and the Bharatiya Janata Party. According to BJP sources, a draft of the Common Minimum Programme is with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. According to sources, the two parties have reached an agreement where PDP will get the Chief Minister's post, while the Deputy Chief Minister will be formed the BJP. However, the bone of contention between the two parties is over They stand on the controversial Armed Forces Special Powers Act, APSPA, and Article 370. As per sources, the PDP wants status quo on Article 370 in writing, but the BJP is not willing to commit to the same. BJP has in principle agreed for a six-year term for BDP patron Mufti Muhammad Sayyid, while the party will hold the post of Deputy Chief Minister, which is expected to be given to state BJP leader Nirmal Singh. The death toll from swine flu in 2015 alone has soared to 585 with 100 more casualties reported across the country since February 12th prompting the center to order additional stocks of medicines and diagnostic kits. While the total number of swine flu deaths had stood at 485 till February 12, the latest official data released on Monday said 100 more people succumbed to the H1N1 virus in the three days till February 15, taking the toll to 585. Altogether, 8,423 people have contracted swine flu this year in the country. A temple in Seattle in the state of Washington has been vandalized, triggering a police investigation and strong reactions in India, where politicians reminded President Barack Obama of his recent comments on religious tolerance. A swastika and the words, get out, were spray-painted on a wall of one of the largest Hindu temples in the Northwest. The Seattle temple was vandalized on the eve of celebrations for the festival of Mahasivratri. This kind of thing should not happen in the U.S. Who are you telling to get out? This is a nation of immigrants. Nitya Niranjan, chairman of the board of trustees of the temple, said to news agency. A minor tsunami hit northern Japan today after a strong undersea earthquake struck off the coast. 
in the same area that was devastated by a killer tsunami in 2011. A wave of 20 centimeters 8 inches was recorded in Kuji, Eastern Iwet, at 9.7 a.m., way below the possible 1 meters 3.3 feet tsunami that the Japan Meteorological Agency, JMA, warned could hit. Myanmar's president has vowed not to lose an inch of territory in clashes with ethnic rebels in a region bordering China, after intense fighting sent tens of thousands fleeing across the frontier. Violence between Myanmar's army and Kokang rebels in northeastern San state has sparked alarm in China, which has warned of a threat to border security after some 30,000 reportedly crossed into Yunnan province in the last week. Let's see the headlines once again. It's unfortunate that Manipur government is not trying to utilize bio-resources properly, says Union Minister Hertzberden. Thank you for watching our news and for more updates, please stay tuned.